Polar Fitness shared home location data of soldiers, all-inclusive malware features mining and ransomware, and tens of thousands are affected by Fortnite malware. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for July 10th, 2018, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire, and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. So if you want access to exclusives, including the brand new Discord server, check out the Patreon link in the show notes below. And special thanks to our newest patrons, Enrique, Mitchell, Jesus, Brian, Pedro, Java, and the Beanstalk, Gabster, and G. Gene. And now, on to the news. Way back in January, fitness company Strava was found to be revealing sensitive data about the location and whereabouts of users that it tracked. This was worrying because it affected even folks at secretive military bases. Well, another fitness company called Polar, which can feed data into the Strava application, was also found to be revealing even more sensitive information, including the location of homes and regular routines of people at intelligence agencies, weapons storage sites, airfields and bases, and even more. Polar makes devices such as the Balance Smart Scale, the M600 smartwatch, and the M430 running watch watch in a lot more than that. Polar also prides itself in having a very open platform for users to share their exercise goals and wins, but this also comes with problems of privacy. So the social aspect of Polar's system allows a user to upload a photo and attach it to a username, or they can also connect it to a Facebook profile. Now on their Polar Flow website, anyone can look at a map, plug in an exercise, and literally trace the footsteps of a routine for any user who has chosen to share that data. Compared to Strava and Garmin, for example, this application allows you to browse via map instead of browsing via user. And Polar has been tracking data for four years at least compared to the relatively short cycle of data from the other two. Now in action, you could look up routines for any user on the site and see their full name and profile photo connected to the routine. Cross-referencing this with information on a Facebook profile? That would be rather simple. Now, since many of the folks stationed at these military bases are high-ranking officers, for example, who may have knowledge of sensitive information regarding their work, this data could be used by attackers. It could also be used against personnel who are stationed near or within sensitive areas, such as along the border of North Korea or working in a conflict zone. Polar Flow allowed anyone to pry into the private routines of users across the globe, but to make matters worse, this privacy issue allows data collection of exercise info for 6,500 users just around those sensitive areas. Unfortunately, Polar's privacy settings are kind of vague as well. Switching to stricter privacy settings only affects new sessions, while old ones are still searchable. Polar also does not provide an option to hide home location data, and removing sessions appears to be a pretty annoying task, as you have to delete each one separately. The GPS data shared by PolarFlow is accurate enough to determine a home location, and even accurate enough to figure out an apartment in a very large building. Now, after being informed of these security issues by security researchers, Polar suspended the Explorer functionality on their site, and they are looking into solutions. They also put the blame on customers for opting into sharing that training session data. For users, of course, you can check app permissions in the application, anonymize data as much as possible, like don't use your full name for a username, for example, and start or end your sessions in a public place, not at your house. Alternatively, though, just not wearing a tracker would also be the best option. If you hear some weird noises in the background, that's my neighbors here at the studio and I can't really do anything about it, so unfortunately we just have to deal with it. But on to story number two. Two researchers at Kaspersky Labs have discovered a new variant of an older type of malware dubbed Rachne, which has now added cryptocurrency mining to its repertoire. Now, Rachne was initially discovered way back in 2013 when the malware analyst noticed this Trojan ransomware infecting machines. Since the ransomware does not always have a payout, as an example, if a target does not have anything valuable to unlock by paying the ransom, they could just not pay anything and then wipe the drive. Well, the attackers 
Chinese later added the ability to mine cryptocurrency instead. In order for the malware to infect a target, the user has to receive an email with a Word file attachment, and the doc asks the user to enable editing if it's opened. An attachment in the document opens a permissions dialog box, which then runs the malicious executable. The malware then runs in the background, checking for antivirus software or virtual machine usage, then it checks the hardware setup of the machine to determine the best route to take, ransomware or mining. So the ransomware encrypts data in RSA 1024 if a Bitcoin folder exists on the target machine, because they figure they can get some money out of them. The cryptocurrency miner looks for two or more logical processors, then runs malware called MinerGate to mine Monero, Monero Original, and Dashcoin. These are hidden as trusted processes with fake certificates that don't get flagged by Windows. It also disables Windows Defender if no antivirus software is seen. And lastly, if the computer does not have a Bitcoin folder or two or more logical processors, it'll just be used as a worm to infect all the other machines on the local network. And once it's installed, the malware also runs a self-deletion of its temporary files. Rockne is currently being used in Eastern European countries, and Russia is most notable on this list with Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Germany, and India following behind in percentage of attacks. So how do you protect yourself? Well, no decryption tool is currently available for Arachne, unfortunately, so be skeptical of suspicious attachments or links sent to you via email, including from your contacts. Back up your system, remember two is one and one is none, and use good anti-malware or AV software or apps. On Monday, Rainway, which is a cloud-based service which allows for people to play games on remote devices, similar to the PlayStation Now, announced a malware infection. People wishing to play on this service must get connected through an approved URL, and two of these URLs, adtelligent.com and springserve.com, were hosting fraudulent JavaScript and infecting customers. So the engineers at Rainway soon realized that every single ISP that had been infected was playing Fortnite of all things. So the hackers injected ads into the gaming software, which resulted in many errors which notified the company of the malware. This malware is able to hijack and infect even secured and encrypted sessions on the web. And once your web server is infected, the malware will inject multiple fake ads that are fraudulent into every single website that a user visits using man-in-the-middle attacks. Now, once the engineers realized that the malware was only targeting Fortnite players, they started to download and test all of the gaming cheats that were available online. And they soon found a cheat which promised to help players gain more currency and better shooting aim during each game, yay FPSs. And this cheat was the cause of the malware because once researchers installed it on virtual boxes, it would automatically install a self-signed root certificate. Now, a root certificate is the topmost certificate of the tree, the private key of which is used to sign other certificates. This means that a root cert essentially allows for the device to give all access to the malware, and then it creates that man-in-the-middle attack. Now, with the root certificate compromised, the malware was able to add in tags for Adtelligent and direct thousands of fraudulent ads into every single website visited by the infected device. Oh boy, so the malware was reported to the service provider and it was removed, but by that time it had been downloaded 78,000 times by different users and it created more than 300,000 errors. Wow. So the researchers' findings were then reported to Adtelligent as well as Springserve.com, and both of these companies made sure to get rid of that malware. The VPM marketing for Adtelligent, Nicholas Riqueda, wrote, quote, We never tolerate any kind of fraudulent activities, and we provide a number of third-party scoring solutions to make sure any suspicious activities never take place. They combated the malware by using a process called certificate pinning, and this process delivers a set of public keys which bind specific certificates to domain names in order to prevent them from being trusted by the browser, thus preventing the proliferation of fraudulent ads. This defense is good, but it does not protect from root certificates that have been installed to perform man-in-the-middle attacks. This means that malware has the ability to read and tamper with HTTPS protected sites on the internet. It is then recommended for people who fear infection to download a trusted antivirus and scan their device for malware. Patrons, make sure to share your favorite stories in the community tab or on Discord, and every Friday I will pick three or more top stories for a voting poll that patrons can vote on to be included in next week's show. Patrons get access to a downloadable audio version of the show, first looks at show topics, 
those polls, discussions just for patrons, behind the scene photos, and now that secret Discord server just for patrons at two bucks per month and up. So join now to get access to all of these and help support the show. Our next milestone goal gets you access to a live video Q&A just for patrons at all levels, and it also gets us closer to doing a second episode each and every week. And also, a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos like this brand new one. I love them, keep them coming. Thank you so, so very much. And hit that subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. It's time for Pootie's big break.